In this video, we'll look at some examples of how we can add audio both for music and 3D sound effects. So, let's get started. Okay, we're starting off in a class called Audio Example. Now, in this class, we're going to be going over how we can play audio clips in a few different ways. Now, the two different ways are going to be 3D audio clips and 2D audio clips. 2D audio clips you can think of as background music, anything that plays at the same volume throughout the entire scene or the game, whatever you're playing, that is going to be known as 2D audio, whereas 3D audio is going to be based off its location. I provided a couple of audio clips in the audio folder. Again, you'll find these in the link in the description. You'll find a link to the code repository there. And it will include this audio folder, which has the growl.mp3 and the terror underscore ambience.mp3. Now, both of these audio clips are going to be used in slightly different ways. The terror ambience is going to be thought of as kind of like the background music to our scene, whereas the growl is going to be attached to a zombie character that will be used for 3D audio. Now, we also have a couple of characters in here that we've seen before. We have the character underscore scared. This will just be a visual piece just to kind of add to our scene. And then we have a zombie growl. This is also going to be a visual piece, but we're going to be using an animation event to play the growl.mp3. So let's take a look at how this is done. I'll jump down and we're going to start off by playing the first audio clip, which is going to be terror underscore ambience. And we're just going to do this in the create environment. We're not basing this off any kind of event within our scene. We're just going to have this play automatically right from the very beginning. And the way that we will set this up is going to be the same for both audio clips. The only difference here is how we adjust the options for these. So to start off, we're going to create a sound that references the terror ambience in our audio folder. So I'm going to call it background music, and this will be a new sound. Okay, make sure you import that from Babylon.js. So again, this should pop up at the very beginning here. So sound. All right, we'll provide a name for it. So I'm going to say background music. Next, we need to provide the URL or array buffer. So I'm just going to provide the URL where it's located right here, which is in the audio folder. So that'll be dot forward slash audio terror ambience.mp3. Now in here, we can also provide a scene. You don't really need to provide all these other options in here. As you can see, they are optional, but I do want to get down to the options. So for that, I am going to be passing in the scene. I'm not going to be using the ready to play callback, but we can go over what that does. So let's add in a scene. So this.scene. For the ready to play callback, this will be used whenever the sound, the audio clip that you use here has loaded. We can then use that to play the audio clip, but I'm going to have this play automatically on its own and we'll see how that's done in a moment. So I'm going to set this to null. And then for the options, now there are quite a few options you'll be using quite often. So let's take a look at a few of them. So to start off, we're going to write in volume. And this is pretty self-explanatory. By default, the volume is going to be set to a value of one. So I'm just going to set this to 0.75 for now. And then for the other option that we want to use by default, this will be set to auto play. Now auto play is going to be set to true here. And what this is going to do is that once this loads, we're then going to automatically play this audio clip. We can also use the callback in here for that as well, but this will also play the audio clip for us by default. Now note, I'm not using this quite yet. Just by assigning it in this way, I can play the audio clip automatically right when the scene loads, right when we load this audio clip as well. So let's just take a look at how this works. I already have the audio clip assigned. Let's take a look at this in the browser. Okay, let's enable the audio. Okay, so the audio clip is playing in the background. Now I did adjust the volume in the video, but if you are following along with the same audio clip, do make sure that you reduce the volume on your speakers, otherwise this could be quite loud. So we're playing the audio in the background. You can see we have our two characters here. That's the only audio that we're playing. Now, what if you wanna play this at a certain volume, or let's say you wanna have this gradually increase in volume over time. We'll take a look at how we can both play the audio clip whenever we want and also adjust its volume. Let's go back to our code and let's see how that's done. Okay, going back to our code, we're gonna take a look at how we can fade in our audio. So right now it's starting off at a volume of 0.75 right when the scene starts. 
Instead, I want to have this fade in and adjust the volume over time, let's say for 30 seconds. I then want to increase the volume all the way up to 0.75. So what I'll do for now is I'll set the volume to start off at zero, and then I want to set the volume after I create this and set the volume to be 0.75 there after 30 seconds. So we're going to say background music dot set volume. Now you could also just set the volume afterwards. I don't need to provide that here, but we want to go over how we can play around with the audio in Babylon. So we need to provide a new volume and this is a number. And again, I'm going to use 0.75 for this. And we also have the optional time value here as well. This is a gradual change between where it's at now and to this new value. So I wanted to adjust this value up to 30. That's going to be 30 seconds. Make sure that you use 30 and you're not using milliseconds. This is 30 seconds, not milliseconds. Okay. And let's give this another quick try. Okay, there we go. So you can see that the audio is slowly increasing over the course of 30 seconds. So now we get a nice fade in effect and we can do this on the other side as well. So if you want to fade music out, you can do the same thing, but we're not going to be going over how to do that. Okay, so that is the basics of playing any kind of 2D audio. There's not really a whole lot to it. Now let's take a look at using 3D audio. So 3D audio is going to have quite a bit more to it. And a lot of the options that we're using with 3D audio can also be applied to the 2D audio. But let's jump down into the Create Zombie. So I'll close this up now. And actually, I'm going to go and turn this off for the time being just so we can actually play just the growl effects that we're going to be using with the zombie down below. Close this up. And remember, we are going to be using an animation event with this character. I've already gone through the process of setting that up. So here I have a growl animation. We've already seen that in browser. And I set this up to run at frame 70 of that animation. Right now I have just a console login here. It says growl animation event. We then add that event to the animation and then I play that animation. So I stop that animation first, I add the event and then I replay it. Now we're going to be playing our audio clip in this section here. So I'll remove that console.log and I'm going to create the audio outside of the animation event. I don't need to create this every single time this runs. So I'll do this right below where we stop the initial animation. And again, it's a very similar process as before. I'm going to call this growl effects and this will be a new sound. Okay, growl effects. Again, we provide the URL. Okay, now for the growl effects, there's really only a few things we need to modify. So by default, if we don't want this audio clip to play, you would set the auto play to false, which is the default. So I don't actually need to provide that value. I need to set something called spatial sound if I do want to use this with a 3D audio clip. So let's type in spatial sound. And all I have to do here is set this to true. Now by default, there's also going to be something called the distance model. And the distance model is essentially going to determine how this audio is affected as you get closer and further away from it. By default, this will be using a linear. That means that as we get closer to that object or the source of the audio, it's going to get louder and louder. And the inverse is also going to be true. As you get further and further away, it'll get lower and lower. So if we want to use a different distance model, you can provide that in here. We're just going to start off by using the linear, which is the default. Now with linear and only linear, we have an option here to use max distance. So max distance by default is going to be set to a value of 100. Now this is 100 units. So this can really be anything that you want within your scene. It could be 100 feet, 100 meters, whatever that may be. But this is 100 units. Now 100 can be a bit large for what we're using this for. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce this down to a value of 10. Okay. And that's all we need for now. So I have everything I need for a 3D audio clip. Now there are a few other things that we need to set up, but we can't do that in the options. So the other thing that we need to set up here is a position. By default, if we use spatial sound, the growl effects is going to start off at a point of 0, 0, 0 within our world. I want to use this with my zombie character. So going up a little bit right here, I can see that I position my zombie character at negative 7, 0 and 0. So there are a few ways of 
essentially attaching this to that character. One, we can either provide the position, the exact position of that character. And in this case, it would be something that you'd want to use if you have a static element. So a static mesh, a static object that is not going to be moving, it would have an audio source. Now I know my zombie is not going to be moving, so I can use this, but I'll show you both ways anyways. Down below here, what I'll do is I'll say growl effects dot, and we have set position. Now set position is used if you want to provide a vector three yourself. So let's say you want to play this audio at a random point within a world, you can pass in a vector three. So set position, you need to pass in a vector three. So I could say new vector three, negative seven, zero, and zero, okay? The exact same position as a zombie character. Now, if your zombie character is gonna be moving around and you still wanna have that audio attached to that character, you can also use something called growleffects.attach to mesh, okay? And this will take in a transform node. I can pass in meshes zero, and it'll work in the exact same way. But I'm just gonna use set position in this case. I'll leave this in here, but I'll comment it out just so you know exactly what it is. So again, you would wanna use that if you have a mesh that may be moving around. You want to ensure that the audio effects always follows that character around. So attach mesh is what you would wanna use. In my case, I'm just gonna use set position. We can also play around with the position just to kinda of see how that works with 3D audio. Now remember, we don't have auto play set to true in this case, so that auto clip should not play unless we specify when we wanna play that. But well, we do have an animation event down below that we want to use. So in our animation event within here, what I'll do is I'll say growleffects.play. Okay, now again, you can also see that we have time offset and length in here. We're not using those in this case. I'm just gonna leave this as is. Now we are gonna run into some issues doing it this way, but we'll take a look at how we can modify that to play properly. So let's take a look at what we have in our browser so far. Okay, so you can see as I get closer and closer, I can hear the audio clip getting louder and louder. As I move away, we eventually get to the point where we reach the end of that max distance, and I no longer hear the audio clip playing. So keep that in mind with the linear distance. It's based off the max distance, but right now we have a value of 10 units. Once I reach the outer edge of that, once I'm at, say, 11 units, I should no longer hear that audio at all. It just cuts off. So as I get within 10 units, I should start hearing that sound clip again. Now you are gonna notice something weird with how we set the audio clip to play. We are doing this based off an animation event, but we haven't specified whether or not the audio clip should finish playing before playing again. We're just playing it back to back every time we hit frame 70 of our animation. We also see that the audio clip does not actually match the speed of the animation. So let's take a look at how we can modify those values to get this to look a little bit more natural with this character. Okay, going back to our code, we need to adjust the playback rate of the audio clip. So right below where we created the set position, we'll say growl effects dot set playback rate. Now the playback rate by default is gonna be set to a value of one. So going below one, we'll essentially stretch it out it's gonna sound slower, it's gonna sound different. And then increasing it above one is gonna increase the speed of that. It's going to adjust its pitch. So keep that in mind if you are adjusting the playback rate, it is gonna sound different than the original audio clip. Now in my case, I wanna speed this up to try to match the speed of the animation. So I'll set this up to a value of 1.85. Okay, so now we set the playback rate down below here. I only want to play the audio clip if we're not currently playing an audio clip. So the way that we can do that is we can check to see whether or not we are playing an audio clip. So I could say if we're not playing an audio clip, so if growl effects dot is playing, so if we're not playing an audio clip, then I want to play this. Otherwise, we're not going to be doing anything at all. Okay, so again, if we're not playing an audio clip, then we can play. That way we don't get those overlapping audio clips, which sound weird. But we've adjusted the playback rate and we ensure that we're not playing double clips. All right, let's take a look at this in our scene now.
Okay, so now that sounds much better. You can see we're not overlapping audio clips and the audio better matches the animation of the zombie. Now feel free to adjust the distance. Again, we are using linear for this. So if I get too far away, I no longer hear this character anymore. Once we're within 10 units of the zombie character, I should hear the audio effects. Okay, now let's combine this with the other audio. So we're gonna be playing both together. So going back to our code, let's scroll up a bit. We did this in our create environment. I commented out the background music dot set volume. It's gonna play this once again, and we should hear both the audio clips playing. Again, this is 2D audio clips and 3D audio clips being played together. Okay, so there you go. That's how you play audio clips inside of Babylon JS.